Hey everybody, my name is Martha Dallas and I am a celebrant. I am the founder and owner of a little business called Vermont Celebrants. First, uh, what a celebrant is, because a lot of grown-ups don't even know what it is. It's similar, very similar, to being an officiant. An officiant is somebody who officiates things, especially in my case, ceremonies, like weddings and funerals or memorial services. Uh, being a celebrant, or more specifically, a life cycle celebrant, which I am, is basically kind of like being a secular or a non-religious minister. The people I work with, many of them are not religious, some are spiritual, some have all kinds of beliefs. It's a lot about religious diversity and a mix of having religious beliefs and not having religious beliefs at all. So I officiate ceremonies for them. My career really has roots going all the way back to when I was about your age, let's say middle school, high school, realizing that I was interested in really deep and profound questions like what does it mean to be human? Why are we here? What am I to do with my life? Uh, and when I got to college, I studied, took a lot of classes in religion and studied theology. Um, and my interest in that was so strong that uh, after college, I went to graduate school and I studied theology more and education because I was interested in doing work at uh, work where learning and religion uh, sort of came together. So I taught religious studies for a couple years and then most of my uh, professional life, I was a director of religious education at uh, a kind of church called the Unitarian Universalist Church. And I chose that church because it's a lot about all kinds of different religions and all kinds of different beliefs. So I created programs, educational programs, to learn about all kinds of different beliefs and ideas. So I have been a celebrant now for two years, just about. Um, and I came into it uh, as a result of taking up backpacking of all things. Um, I was alone on the trail uh, doing my first solo backpacking trips. And I realized what I wanted to do was to make my work in the world. I wanted to create the work rather than having a job working for somebody else. And I took a course on how to create your own business. And when I was doing that, I did some research um, about the kind of things I wanted to be doing. And that's when I discovered that celebrancy or being a celebrant, a life cycle celebrant, was actually a thing. So I got trained to do that and have been developing this work ever since. Um, a typical, actually, no, first I wanted to say my favorite thing about this work. Um, really, truly, um, the favorite thing I have is actually doing the ceremonies, creating the ceremonies, being in them, and, um, and often the resulting uh, really positive feedback I get from people. Most of the work I do leads up to them. Um, so... A typical, uh, typical tasks in my work are things like, so every day I check my email first thing in the morning. I'm looking in particular for any new um, inquiries from somebody who might like me to do a ceremony for them. Uh, another thing that I'll do, obviously if I get one, it's important for me to respond as soon as possible. Um, I want potential clients to know that I am prompt and responsive. And um, so another thing I'll do in a typical day is writing. Um, writing is at the heart of my work. So I write these ceremonies for people um, and I, I make them customized to the people's needs. 
say it's a, a wedding or memorial service, which I did, hopefully I mentioned in the beginning. Um, those are the two most common ceremonies I'm finding I'm doing for people. Um, I might post on social media about what I'm doing just to engage folks that are out there. Um, I might have a Zoom uh, kind of conversation with a potential client. Um, if somebody's interested in working with me, they want to know, do a, am I somebody that they feel comfortable working with? So we talk about that as a possibility. Um, and the other thing I'll do if I have a ceremony coming up is I'll spend some time planning it. I have a checklist of things to remember to do, things to remember to bring, and I'll actually practice. I practice every ceremony before I do it. Um, if I'm actually officiating a ceremony, I spend some time calculating my travel time, make sure I get there nice and early. I'll choose a nice appropriate outfit. I do not dress like this. I have some fancy clothes that I wear. I'll arrive early um, and check in with other staff and vendors that work there, usually exchange business cards with them because a lot of the piece of this work to grow it is to make connections with other people in the in the industry. That's my cat off to the side. He's saying hi. Um, I'll then conduct the ceremony and I always stay for a little while, uh, you know, out of a sense of politeness just to thank and congratulate people if that's appropriate or if it's been a death just to mingle a bit and you know continue to share condolences if, if needed. I wanted to say that if this is a, a, a small business at this point and at this stage of its growth it's often the work involved is often much less than a full eight-hour day of work. Um, the number of hours in a day varies a lot day to day Sometimes I don't really have anything that needs to be done. Sometimes I have a lot to do, and it includes often evening and weekend hours. Um, some things that would make somebody a good fit for this kind of work would be if you're really good at writing, if you love words and you love language, if you like singing or acting and you're comfortable doing that. Um, you feel like you're in your element when you're on a stage. Um, people who are introverted, people who are content with quiet uh, and being alone with their thoughts, people who are interested in deep and meaningful ideas and big questions like I said I was, questions like what does it mean to be human, what happens when we die, if you wonder about that. Um, how should we live our lives, and um, particularly relating to doing ceremonies and uh, rituals, which are sometimes part of ceremonies, question of how do we change when major events occur in our lives, events like births, deaths, marriages, even graduations, what is it that transforms in us, and how can how can we make that moment of transition even deeper and more meaningful and more powerful when changes like that happen? Uh, people who are drawn to the humanities would be a good fit for this work. Humanities being things like poetry, philosophy, religion, anthropology, which is the study of being human, humanity, um, art, literature. Um, that's who would make a good fit. So I'm going to demonstrate just a few little things about um, being a celebrant and say a little bit about um, how I make sure I do my best work as a celebrant. So I, um, I have this shoulder bag that I bring with me for all my ceremonies and in it I keep snacks, a water bottle, a number of, of little things I might need, and I also keep, very importantly, um, oh, I keep like a client folder if I have information about the client, but I keep my own 
ceremonies folder. This is what I use when I conduct a ceremony. I'll print the ceremony out in advance, make sure I've got everything in a large enough type that I can read it well when I'm speaking. I'm just going to lift the camera a little bit. Um, so that's what goes in that bag. And then the other thing I bring with me almost all the time is this super cool thing. It's a portable battery powered amplifier because a lot of the ceremonies I do are outside, especially the weddings. So this has this cool little strap. So I've got one thing on one shoulder, another thing on the other shoulder, and in it is this, um, this little amplifier. So when I get to the ceremony site, I will pull up the antenna on this, I'll turn it on, and I'll find a spot that's, uh, say it's at a wedding, which is again where I use it most of the time. That's not going to be, uh, the camera won't pick it up, but the photographer, I'll put it off to the side somewhere where the camera can't see it, but in your case, you might want to see it. And there's a few different microphones that come with it, but the one I use the most is this one. It's called the lavalier microphone, and I find a place that's discreet and hidden on my clothes, usually further in the back, but I put it, clip it onto what I'm wearing it's part of what I do to get ready. And then I put this on my collar and I'll take some time usually to tuck the cord so you can't see it and imagine you're wearing so much nicer clothes. And one thing I always like literally write in my notes is to remember to, this has an on and off switch to turn it on. With a ceremony, you really get one shot to get it right. So. It's really important to be, to have really good checklists and to learn from your mistakes and make sure that you don't mess it up because um, even a small mistake could be a real disappointment to somebody who's paid you good money and trusted that you'll do what you told them and promised them you would do. So what I'm going to do is um, invite you to imagine with me that we are at a wedding. I actually have here uh, uh, um, the text of a, a real wedding I did about a week ago, pulled it out of the recycling to use for this video, and um, I'm going to read a little bit of what I actually read at that wedding, and I'll tell you before I speak that really the, the two things I have practiced a lot in my public speaking and that are really important to me and to the quality of my work are that Everything I say, I really believe it and I really mean it. And I think that in my head so that it can convey the truth of what I believe and what I'm saying to, uh, in this case, to the couple and the guests who are there. Um, I really believe, I know that when you are speaking, you need to know that you're telling, that what you're saying is true and that you believe in the meaning that you're conveying. Um, you're not just reading words. It's a lot more than that. And I take that very seriously. And so along with that, the other thing I do is I really make sure to look up a lot and make eye contact with my couple and with folks in the um, among the guests. So. But imagine with me that we are in the midst of a wedding ceremony and that the bride, in this case it was a bride and groom, it could be any kind of a couple. But one person is standing here and in this case it was the groom standing right here. And we're in the middle of the ceremony. And I say to them, Mandy and Jeff. You've been together for over three years, shared many life travels, and you've bought a dining room table together to make Jeff's bachelor pad your shared home. And I should say this elicited a chuckle from the audience. The guests was great. So I continued. So I ask you now, as we enter into the heart of this moment, do you intend to make a public commitment before these, your 
family and friends, to share your lives with one another as husband and wife. If so, please answer, we do. And they said together, we do. And I continued with much more. I think the other thing I'll mention, which I'm sure you noticed, is that I speak, when I speak, I speak slowly and clearly, and again, with just with a lot of intention. So everybody can hear everything clearly and not wonder, what did she just say? Anyway, that's a bit about me, I'm Martha Dallas and what it means to be doing the work I do now as a celebrant, a life cycle celebrant. I wish you all just an awesome adventure in your own uh, lives and career journeys. Take care, everybody. <laughs>